In our second video on how to take things we've done before in calculus and apply them in the context of a parametric curve, we're going to look at areas enclosed by some particular curve. It, that is, in this case, I have this parametric curve that we saw in the previous video, and now I'm interested in what is the area inside of that little loop. Well, recall that we've done areas before, and what we usually did back in the day was write it as y is a function of x, and that we describe this height as going from the x-axis up to whatever our function was. So if I just, for example, take the positive half of this, maybe multiply by 2 by symmetry at the end, but just take the positive halves, then that's just a familiar y is f of x. And then what we would typically say would be that the area was going to be the integral from a to b, some left endpoint and some right endpoint on your x values, of the y, or in other words, the f of x, dx. But what we're now going to be talking about is parametric curves, where x is a function of t and where y is a function of t. And in that case, what I'm going to consider is x say f of t and y say g of t, and I don't have limits on the x values, I have a limit alpha and beta on the t values, that t is constrained between an alpha and a beta. And you can line them up with the previous formula by saying that the a is the f, remember f is the function that represents the x, at the value of alpha, and that b is equal to the f at the value of beta. But nonetheless, I have this switch from a's to b's to alpha's to beta's to keep the difference between x and t separate. And then if I want to plug this in, I'm going to claim I get the following formula. I claim it's an integral from alpha to beta. It's an integral with respect to t. It's got a dt there. And then it's big F of little f times f prime. Okay, why do I write this down? Well, this is a substitution rule. Recall how typically substitutions we do a u substitution, but because I'm going between x and t's, I'm going to do an x substitution here. That is, if I look at what f of t is, f of t, the lowercase f of t, is nothing but x. And then if I look at what f prime of t dt is, well, that's going to be the same thing as dx. So if you apply the substitution rule to the second formula, you get precisely the first formula. It's just, I'm not doing a u substitution, I'm doing a sort of x substitution, just a change of my labeling, but nonetheless the same idea. Alright, well now let me look at this capital F of lowercase of f of t. Remember, capital F is representing the y, it's representing the height, and because it's a composition, the innermost thing is a function of t. But this is nothing but the function g of t. g of t also represents y, represents the height above the x-axis, and is also a function of t, these are the same thing. So, capital F of lowercase of f of t is nothing but g of t. Alright, so that's my formula for the area beneath some parametric curve down to the x-axis and in between the endpoints of t equal to alpha and t equal to beta. Alright, so let's do that for the specific example we've seen before. In this example, the x or the f of t was t squared and the y or the g of t was t cubed minus 3t. I'm going to have to compute f prime, so I can go and do that, f prime is 2t. And then I want to figure out the endpoints for my integration. Now, I'm going to do one little trick, which is to exploit some symmetry. Uh, I'm only going to consider the top half of this, that allows me to do the stuff above the x-axis, and then I can multiply by 2. Indeed, for any fixed x value, the y's got a positive and a negative, it's completely symmetric over the x-axis, so I'm allowed to do this, just consider the top half and multiply by 2 trick. What are the endpoints for just the top half of this? Well, if I plug in x equal to 0, this is sort of the left endpoint in x. Plugging in x equal to 0 gives me that t is equal to 0. So when t is 0, I'm at that leftmost point. And then when x is equal to 3, I get that t is either equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, it's correct that there's two different t values here, because, for example, if you started at 3, 0, say at t equal to minus root 3, and then you can carry on increasing your values of t until you get to t equal to root 3, and you've gone around the loop, ended up exactly back at 3, 0. But because I'm only doing the top half, I only need to do it once, I'm going from the left to the right, I'm just going to use t equal to the positive square root of 3, multiply by 2 in my answer. So what do I have? I have that 2 out the front because I'm just doing the top half. Then the integral from 0 up to positive square root of 3, and then I put in my g of t and I multiply my g of t by my f prime of t. And, well, this is just some particular integral. I can go off and compute it, and what do I get? Just whatever this thing is, doesn't really matter. It's a definite integral. 
So now we have replaced our ability to do areas under curves, not for y equal to f of x, but for parametric functions. By the way, I'll note that I'm doing a simple example here, but if you recall back when we had calculus 1, we had issues, for example, where a function was above and below the axis, and you had to break it up into two regions, and the portions beneath the axis were going to count negatively, and the portions above would count positively. Same story would be true here. Likewise, if you had a region that was in between multiple regions, you would take the top one and you subtract off the bottom one. So yes, there's some richness that can occur here, but it's all based on the same formula, this integral of the g of t times f prime of t dt.